Hello everybody, my name is Zach, aka the Weather Gamer, bringing you PCF, Phoenix Cup, Federa Phoenix Cup Federation, Moltres Division, uh, Chicago Charizards Draft Recap. So yes, I'm not in the Ho-Oh Division um, this season, which is where Shadow's at. Um, I told Shadow put me where he thinks I belong, he moved me down to the D-League, it's fine, because the Ho-Oh League has... I probably would go 0-12 in Ho-Oh, to be perfectly honest, so I'm fine playing down in the quote-unquote D-League. It's a good place for me to get some experience, play some people I didn't play last year. Not alone down there. I mean, Lord Ixie's down there. He's always fun to play. I've got Marsh, who I played last year and lost twice to. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of new friends that I've made already um, down there, so looking forward to it. Um, I ended up having 10th pick, I think. I think I was 10th. Let me double-check that here. Yeah, I was 10th overall, um, 10th pick overall, so, um, obviously I wasn't gonna get the lights, likes of Celesteela or Tapu Coco or anything high-powered, um, Kieran Black, all that sort of thing because I was so low. Turns out I could have taken Kieran Black. I really debated it because Kieran Black fell all the way down to 11th before it was finally taken. But as I've said previously, I want to get back to my bread and butter, which is weather-based teams, rain team, sand team. I want to try a, sun, a legitimate sun team. Like I want to try teams that... I used to use very well, because the last time I ever made playoffs in the league was my rain team in WWC, and before that, it was my sand team over in the Deathly Subscriber League. And those were my first two leagues ever, and I made playoffs in both with weather-based teams, and since using that, or since abandoning weather-based teams, I haven't really done that well, so I decided to go with weather again, and maybe. I chose Sand. Sand is one of those that I ran in the DSL. I actually didn't have a full Sand team. Well, I had a full Sand team, but because of the way that worked, it was really weird. But I ended up having, like, Hippowdon, Gigalith, Mega Garchomp, Lycanroc, and some other stuff to fill out my... I didn't have Excadrill, I didn't have Titar, um, I didn't have Stoutlin, like, some of the key, like, notorious Sand... Um, notorious sand mons. So, this time, because I had 10th, I went with Excadrill. Excadrill is a very, very good mon. You don't need to have um, sand for it to work. A scarfed mold breaker. Sorry, I'm pulling up my notes because I actually did type out a bunch of notes here. Um, a scarfed mold breaker set um, can do really well. Um, you could run. Any sort of, like, Z-Crystal on this is extremely good. It has um, three really good abilities. Mold Breaker, so Levitate users, you're going to get hit with the EQ, which really hurts the Rotom forms and some of that, or Sturdy Mons, or that sort of thing. Um, Sand Force. Um, oh, it also breaks through, like, Unaware Clef, and that Mold Breaker does because it ignores their ability. I remember doing that with Gyarados, Mega Gyarados last season. Sand Force, so one point through, basically you're throwing on a Life Orb on Ground, Steel, and Rock type attacks when Sand is up, or Sand Rush to give yourself a, basically a Choice Scarf, um, Speed Boost, 110 HP is really good, 88 Speed, while it could be better once you get Sand Rush in there, makes it pretty good, 135 Attack is just monstrous, um, it's a Spinner, I, in a Rocker, I mean, Drill's not necessarily going to be used as hazard control, but um, it is a very, very good mon. It's got pretty good coverage in things like Shadow Claw. Obviously, it's Stab Iron Head and Quake. Um, Stone Edge always hits really, really hard. It could be a Swords, that, swords Dance Setup Sweeper. It can... Hey, 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 hey. There's no need to cry. You're fine. Um, an edge sweeper has aerial ace, um, 
brick break like there's there's an interesting amount of different moves it can do as a first x scissor as a first round pick is this a reach compared to some other stuff maybe but i didn't trust it getting back to me um so i went with excadrill as my first mon in sand and i'm super super excited about it i love the possibility of actually getting to use a legitimate sand sweeper in excadrill because i didn't have my sand sweeper in dsl was like in rock and mega garchomp which mega garchomp is an extremely good mon Pair with the sand, I grabbed Tyranitar. Now, a lot of people questioned me picking T-Tar because I already had Excadrill. Hippowdon was probably the better choice, just because one points and two, I am now stupidly fighting weak. Because Excadrill and T-Tar both just get blown back by um, fighting types, whereas in my the reason I didn't go the other way is because they both get blown back by ice types. So, Plus, I've used Hippowdon before. I know what it can do. I will draft it again someday for a sand team over T-Tar because of points. But I've never gotten to use T-Tar. And I really, really wanted to use T-Tar because T-Tar is very good outside of sand. You can run a nerve, so no berries. Um, Sandstorm obviously makes it super, super bulky because you get the boost to rock types from... The weather, 110 defense, 100 special defense, and 100 HP make this thing monstrously bulky at times. 134 attack, it can just go to town on things. Um, why didn't I go Mega T-Tar? Because that was the other option that people like. You could have just gone Mega. Because I didn't want to use my Mega slot on T Mega T-Tar. I had other things that I wanted as a Mega, which you'll see later. Um, so I went with standard T-Tar for that reason. Plus, I think standard T-Tar is actually better than Mega T-Tar. Yes, Mega T-Tar is stupid bulky with 150 defense, 120 special defense, and hits like a monster at 164, but that can be mitigated on standard T-Tar. You throw an AV on there, you throw um, D-Dance, you can throw a rock polish set, a weakness po like there's ways around not having Mega T-Tar. Do I want to use Mega T-Tar someday? Absolutely. But for this time, getting back into sand, I went with T-Tar. Um, another mon that has a pretty good move, pool coverage, and a good Z user if I chose to do so. Like I said, the AV set. There's also the D-Dance set that just lets it get up and going outside of the fact that base 61 speed is atrocious to try and D-Dance with, but you get a couple D-Dances up, nothing really stands in your way outside of Scarfers, so yeah, there's T-Tar, so. Now, I have an incredibly bad fighting type weakness. The big thing with Sand teams is they're generally weak to Edge Quake, or for the most part, at least Quake. Um, bulky water types are a big issue. Bulky grass types are a big issue. So fighting bulky water, bulky grass. Big, big, big issue for me. And EQ. Ground types that want to run EQ or exploit my sand. So, returning to the Chicago Charizards from the APA. Rotom Wash. Yes, the washing machine has returned. Um, I love Rotom Wash. I, it's a really good water type. Um, I didn't need to go grab an Electric Immunity because I have Excadrill sitting right there. So I'm okay with um, having this. And Rotom Wash is actually one of the biggest nightmares for a Sand Team. Um, Moldbreaker Excadrill is about the only way that really, really deals with it extremely hard because it has Levitate. It's bulky, and it's super, super annoying. So giving this, it gives me a Volt Switch Pivot. It gives me utility in Defog, so I don't have to Rapid Spin with um, Excadrill. I can Will-O-Wisp things, I can Haze things, or not Haze, um, Toxic things, I can... 
volt switch around. Obviously, hydro pumps hit incredibly hard. Um, I don't remember if hydro is affected by um, rain or not. Let me actually pull up my notes again. Hydro pump. Because for some reason, I think like hydro is affected. No, it's not. Okay. I used to think the weather affected, like, fire blast became 100% when it was in sun. Hydro became 100% in rain. Stone Edge was 100% in sand. But I, that's wrong. I know that. But anyways, um, Rotom Wash is just a very, very good bulky water type and a very good pivoting mon um, for me to have. And it's one of the biggest checks to drill in T-Tar. So taking that away from somebody else made it very, very nice. And I'm looking forward to it. My next pick was, again, another one of those picks that people were like, why are you taking this? There's another version of this that's much better. Same tier, and you don't have to worry about sand screwing up your recovery. So, like I said, bulky waters, bulky grass, ground types that want to edge clay me, um, and try, or at least edge me. Um, Alright, fine. You nuisance, come on. child um rotom takes care of bulky waters as it's a bulky water and then it drops t bolts um it also can take care of ground types but that's relying on a hydro hit so not the greatest answer so what did i go do i went and grabbed shaman so shaman's back um another Mon from the APA Season 2 team before I dropped it for Tapu Bulu. Biggest mistake of my life was going and getting Bulu Lucha. Um, should have just stayed with Scissor and Shaman. Um, would have been so much better off had I stayed with Scissor and Shaman. But anyways, um, I love Shaman. I know people are going to say, well, you should have taken Celebi because Celebi was still available, because it has Recover over Synthesis, because Synthesis gets cut to a quarter health instead of half in Sand. I don't necessarily need Synthesis. I could run Lefty's, um, Lefty's Leech in Synthesis, and I'd still get my 50, I'd get my 50%. Yeah, it cost me my item slot, cost me two move slots, but... The other thing is, I don't necessarily have to run in sand. I have Excadrill that can run outside of sand as a Scarfer. I have T-Tar that I could run a Nerve D-Dance type set or something like that. I don't necessarily have to run sand every week. So bringing Shaman isn't that big of a concern for me, which is why I grabbed it. I also don't like Celebi because it's quad weak to U-Turn. Um, Celebi base 100s. Again, I'm filling out that speed tier a little bit. I don't have that top end speed yet, which is a flaw in my draft, but it definitely checks those bulky water types. It clears them out. It's a status sponge. I guess he's coming. <coughs> okay, there we go. It's a status sponge because of natural cure. I can just switch in and out, take the burns that T-Tar and Excadrill are definitely going to want to not take. Um, take those willows because I can see it coming. Someone's going to try and willow my T-Tar. Because I've done it. I've baited a T-Tar in and then willowed it on the switch. Um, Excadrill won't appreciate them. Toxics to try and slow things down like T-Tar and um, Rotom I can just chuck in and out with. Cure that. Paralysis to slow things down. Um, like having Shaman in the sponge those is really, really good. Obviously, it can be stupidly defensively annoying. Um, you saw me in APA run Subseed Toxic. Subseed Toxic. Mono attack. I forgot what the attack was. But yeah. It does have a very good move pool coverage with things like Earth Power, Air Slash. That Earth Power is a great way to catch fire types trying to come in um, on Shaman. Um, it's just, overall, it's a really, really good mon. And I'm really looking forward to trying it and not abandoning it this season like I did in APA. Um, and final thing I know, 
a lot of people are gonna say you're gonna rely on a seed flare miss or a seed flare to hit at some point and that's gonna cost you the game it very well could cost me that game but you know what if you treat your shaman correctly and you rub it right behind the flower and you tell it it's a good boy and you pet the top of its head and feed it plenty of uh, poffin and pokey block it will never miss a seed flare it's a good boy um oh and the other thing i forgot i don't have to run um i don't have to run synthesis i could just rest and then switch out like go to sleep on the lawn checking in switch out cure myself i'm back to full and get into whatever i need it does have psychic too that was another move i forgot on its um coverage list so there's ways around the synthesis issue so but i'm i'm happy this is filling out very nicely i am still fighting weak i don't have a fighting check or any of that um, but i've covered round types and i've covered bulky waters that are coming in on me uh, very very well in my mind the next pick i needed speed because currently shaman's my fastest mon I grabbed Salazzle. Salazzle is a very, very fast mon at 117. Um, I do regret this pick, though. Still, it's been a week since the draft ended, and the draft stream went on last week. Um, I still regret this pick. I'm still not comfortable with this pick. I don't like this pick. Mainly because Salazzle is an incredible last cannon um it's super super frail i'm pulling up its stats right now 68 um hp 60 defense 60 speed def like that's terrible yeah it's got a really good 111 special attack 117 speed like a nasty plot it can scarf corrosion is very nice because i can poison steel types which Steel types kind of threaten my team still. At least they threaten T-Tar. Um, so it poison types I can toxic. Wear them down. Um, like, I don't know. I just... I don't feel good about this team just because it's... Or not this team, this mon. Just because it's such a frail glass cannon and like... It was tier 3B, so it's 80 points, not 100. And to make some moves, I'd have to do a lot of shenanigans, so I probably won't do anything. Plus, it's speed, which I need. Um, my only thought would be maybe to swap it out for Talon Flame at this point. Like, that's really the only thing, but the problem is Talon Flame and Sand don't mix very well um, plus it's 126 speed which is faster than everything which would put a huge gap between shaman and it like i don't know i think talon flame is a good mon even though gale wings got nerfed but i mean i could go up a tier potentially or down a tier but there's not a lot of there's not a lot of good fire types left and there's not a lot of speed speedy fire types left um i think delphox isn't even that fast delphox is 104 so it'd be a little bit of a speed drop not as bad but i don't know it's it's not a mon that I'm particularly happy about. Maybe I'll find someone to trade with me. Granted, there's no other fire type in the low tier B besides Talonflame, so I'd have to do some major shuffling. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see as I get used to using Salazzle. Maybe it'll do something for me, but I don't know. It breaks grass types really really well like that's that's the reason it's here now i've got my ground types handled i've got my water types handled i can take out my grass types that are opposing me with this and actually my next two picks help deal with the bulky grass types um 
I'm still fighting weak, though. I'm st I still have a fighting weakness. So, to address that, Rabombi. So, this is why I said I don't have to bring sand every week. I really don't. I could just bring Drill and Rabombi, and I'd be just as fine, because... Um, Rabombi I can set sticky webs with. Rabombi is the fastest thing on my team at 122, which is why I said if I drop Salazzle, I've got a massive speed issue. I still have a speed issue, but I'd have a massive speed issue because I'd go from 122 down to Shaman at 100. There's a big gap for things to run Adamant over, um, things like Adamant or Modest over Jolly and Timid, so... But Rabombi can set up Sweep on its own with Quiver Dance. Um, it can be a very good Z user. Stab Bug Buzz, stab um, Moon Blast. It can run Hidden Powers. It can set Sticky Webs, which is really nice. For Control, it does have Roost, I found out, so it can recover up if it's on the bulkier side. Um, and then Quiver Dance and that. It doesn't have Sleep Powder. That's the thing, it does get Stun Spore. So I can pair of things. Um, Honey Gather is a useless ability. Sweet Veil is a useless ability. But Shield Dust is actually not that bad. Um, it stops you from secondary effects. So say this thing's in against a um, fake out user, like as a lead, Sticky Web's lead versus a fake out user. Um, Shield Dust prevents the fake out. So I'll take the fake out damage, but I won't flinch. So then I can still get my sticky webs up, even versus a fake out user. It just potentially breaks a sash or something else, um, which is really really nice. Um, I could also potentially do something because I believe this is another. I think I made Drill, Rabombi, and Salazzle my three Z captains. Um, I could run something like Z. Um, Z sticky webs. So not only do I get sticky webs up on their side, I already get a speed boost myself. And then can go to town like Quiver Dance on plus two speed. Then, so it's a very easy way for me to um, get rolling very very fast. Next up, the mon that is returning the Rye Slayer, as I like to call it at times. Rye, I mean no harm no foul it's always fun to go back and remember that this thing beat rye help me beat rye because Rhydon didn't crit a stone edge um versus mandibuzz um mandibuzz in sand is really really good so i got sniped really really early in the draft one of the few snipes that happened to me um tez drafted reuniclus i was gonna grab reuniclus to like round three was going to be Reuniclus, and then I was going to try to get Rotom Wash round four. Um, because I have a severe fighting weakness. Now, granted, it's not as bad because Brabombi quad resists fighting type hits, Mandibuzz, it's neutral, and Mandibuzz puts a lot of pressure back on fighting types with Brave Bird or Air Slash or um, any flying type attack. Um, Mandibuzz is dummy thick, like, dummy, dummy thick. Um, yeah, it's on the slow side, but what's it matter? It has the ability Overcoat, which is why I was going to draft for Uniclus 2, because it does have o uh, Magic Guard, so no entry hazard, no sand damage, so I can easily bring, um, I will take rocks damage with overcoat, but I can bring this in and not have to worry about rocks and then sand chip and then XYZ, but like 110 HP, 105 defense, 95 special defense. Mandibuzz is a thick, thick bird. Um, it's very, it does suffer move slot syndrome. Um, it really needs five moves because generally you want to run like taunt, toxic roost, you could run Tailwind, there'd be no attack. You could run Toxic Taunt. Like, Toxic Taunt, Roost, Tailwind, U-Turn, Fighting, or uh, Flying or Foul Play. Like, it needs six moves because it suffers that move slot syndrome. 
It does give me slow turn if I wanted to run new turn. Foul play is always great because I can just punish the crap out of offensive threats that want to... That are kind of forced into swords dancing up in order to Oko Amanda Buzz. Um... I don't know. I, I really love it. It did me very, very well in FWL. It's a mod that I've wanted to bring back. I think it's in the top 10 of my kill leaders, actually. So, I it's a mod I'm comfortable with, and I'm very, very glad to get it back. And Rebombi and Mandibuzz helped me check that big fighting type weakness I have now. So, moving on from there, again... Fighting type weakness, really, really bad earthquake weakness now with Salazzle. Um, and Mandibuzz being my only immunity to earthquake outside of Rotom, um, which Rotom does not appreciate Mold Breaker Mons because of its electric type. EQ still hurts it pretty bad. So I get a true, true fighting check and a very, very good um, second immunity to. Earthquake in Uxie. Um, I always get the Lake Trio confused. I've now, this is the second time I've drafted a Lake Trio. I had Azelf over in APA. Um, but Uxie is a defensive, is the defensive one. So base 95 speed, again, I'm filling out those speed tiers very, very nicely outside of that Shaman Slazzle Rebombi gap. Um, 95 speed is nothing to laugh at. It gets me something below Shaman higher than drill um kind of that mid-tier in between there um but 130 defense and 130 spadef yes it's only got 75 base hp but this thing's a nightmare it's a very good stealth rock user so now drill doesn't have to carry rocks t-tar doesn't necessarily have to carry rocks this thing can be rocks it's got the same move pool as um any of the others u-turner um, I have Deagly Maxis. I don't get Flamethrower, though. I get Fire Punch. Um, I can run Hidden Power Fire. I still get Ice Punch. I don't get Ice Beam. Um, but that's okay. Like, it's, it's physical special side, um, attack-wise, is the same. It's base 75s. So, I could run physical. I could run special. Probably lean more towards the physical side. Um, with Knock Off, Stealth Rocks, that sort of thing. It could be a very easy suicide lead to get rocks up like it's good it'll do me wonders i just have to remember like with as elf how to use it but it does really help me check the fighting type weakness now so i feel like i've got this team pretty well rounded out pretty well covered where i don't have to worry about fighting types too much i don't have to worry about bulky grass types too much i don't have to worry about bulky water types too much like I'm taking every part of sand that is an issue and I'm checking it off the board. I'm also building this team so I don't necessarily have to run sand. Like, I could bring a setup T Tar with Rabombi and Webs. I could bring Scarf Moxie Drill or Setup Drill with Rabombi and not have to. I could bring Salat. I don't have to bring sand. I could easily bring Rotom Wash, Shaman, Salazzle, Rabombi, Uxie, and 2BD. Um. Like, I don't have to run sand, and that's the key thing between my past sand teams and the current sand teams that I run is, or the current weather, my past weather teams and my current weather teams. In the past, I fully committed to weather, I drafted all weather mons, and my team couldn't function without weather, so that's the thing I'm learning here. Like, I, I've learned, and why I went back to weather teams, I don't need to build an entire sand team. I don't need to go out and draft Excadrill, T-Tar, and every other sand force or sand rush user so but yeah speaking of sand force and sand rush users i went and grabbed stoutland so as everybody knows i struggle with tier 4 and tier 5 mons i really do um i don't know a lot of them that are good that fit my play style um and so somebody's like, you know, you could go get Stoutland. I was like, I'm not committing to a full sand team. I don't need it. Stoutland's a mod that can come without sand. Choice band to retaliate. What do you have for that? Um, it's a good mod. I like it. It gives me scrappy. Ghost types can be hit by that. 
um, be hit by this thing. It gives me Intimidate, which is nice because I can drop attacks down on fighting types. Just if I need to, I can sack this thing off to a fighting type and Intimidate it and then not have to really worry about the fighting type when I'm in or control swords dancers a little bit when I'm in a bind. And then obviously the sand ability, which makes it a very good sand, um, very good sand partner. So how many games does that one come to? I don't know, but it's just another sand option besides Excadrill and T-Tar. Um, it gives me another Mon that can come in and sweep under sand. Yes, it's another fighting type weak Mon. Oh well, I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah. Then, I gotta check here because I don't wanna, I have an intro for a certain month. Okay, yeah, so it is the next month. So, here's where we get to the mega situation and I had a choice to make. So, in the original draft, Mega Gallade went undrafted, surprisingly. Somehow Mega Gallade didn't get drafted. And I really, really, really was tempted to pick up Mega Gallade right here. Really, really wanted to grab Mega Gallade. But I couldn't do it. Like, Mega Gallade would solve my fighting issue right then and there. Um, it'd be a huge, huge wall puncher for this team. Just break things and then Sand can come in and sweep at the end. Or Sand can break things and Mega Gallade can come in and sweep. But I didn't do it. The reason I didn't do it is because there's a Mon that I used to use on a Sand team, particularly the DSL. It is the champion of my teams. It is besides Zara Aura, who has just as many league appearances now, I think, and Ninetales, who has way more league appearances than this. This thing ate souls. This thing went 20 and 0 before finally getting killed and holds a record as kill leader in the D holds the record in, as a kill leader over in DSL for the season at 22 and 2. We have Feed Me Souls. The Mega Garchomp. Mega Garchomp is, yes, it's slower. I don't have to Mega first turn, which is new for PCF. I don't have to Mega first turn, so I can run a standard Garchomp. I don't get Sandville, but feed me souls. The last time I ran with this thing on a Sand team, it obliterated everything in front of it, averaging like four kills a game. So I'm very, very excited. This also forces people to pick their hidden power. Do they run hidden power ground for Salazzle? Do they run hidden power ice for Garchomp? Do they run hidden power fighting for T-Tar? Do they run hidden power fire for Rebombi and Shaman? Um, like, oh, I'm so ready to run this thing. Um, I, I don't know what else to say other than it is a monster. It gets the Sand Force ability, which gives its attack basically a life or boost on its stab ground type, on rock type hits. 170 base attack. You get a Swords Dance up. Nothing is really checking in on this thing. 120 special attack. 115 defense is nightmarish. 95 standard defense is pretty good. The biggest Spadef. Sorry, 95 Spadef. Um, the biggest issue, it slows down. It loses 10 speed points, so it's now base 92 speed. What could I care if I have webs? Really, what could I care if I have webs? I could bring... I don't have to bring sand with Mega Chomp either. I could bring Sandstorm Mega Gar Chomp. With Rabombi setting up webs. Boom. Gar Chomp. Come and get some, boys and girls. Yeah, you can drop an HP Ice, but because I have such a massive attack stat to begin with, watch me run a bulky chop. Or watch me clear out your Ice type. Like, it's it's a nightmare. <coughs> Fairy types, Excadrill laughs and 
your face. Like, I'm so, 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 so ready for this. And I'm looking forward to getting Mega Garchomp back to the kill leaderboard top. That's my goal this season, is to get Mega Chomp to kill leaders again. It's time. He's been locked in his Pokeball for months. He wants out. He's angry. He's looking for souls. Here comes the Mega Garchomp. Last pick. So I missed out on Mega Glade because I went with Feed Me Souls, so I picked up Standard Glade. I honestly had no idea what I wanted out of Tier 4 at this point. At one point, I wanted Hariyama. Um, Huff decided to snipe that out from underneath me right after I posted um, in a chat I had with him that I was going to grab Hariyama. He was like, yeah, Hariyama's in my draft plan. So I was like, fine, take it. I was going to get Hitmon Lee. Somebody grabbed that. I was going to get Hitmon Top. Somebody grabbed that. Um, so I was like, hey, I need a fighting type. So I was looking at him, and I was like, okay, what's left? Uh, beware. No, I already have Stoutland. That's Fighting Week. Uh, Blaziken. No, I don't need another fire type. Um, Blaziken's not that fast. It's base 80. And I was like, okay, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. There's Glade. Okay, I could run Glade. It's base 80, though, and that's not the speed tier I want. Um, there was, I'm scrolling through the tier right now, going through the same thought process. There's my champ. That'd be pretty good. It's base 80. Why are all the fighting types base 80? There's meta champ. Okay, let's discount Mega Gold. Or let's discount Gallade. It's base 80. Like, I don't need the base 80 speed tier. I'm really log jammed right there. I have Ux, or not Uxie, I have um, Stoutland and Excadrill both right there. I don't need the base 80. I need something to gap between uh, Mandibuzz. Because otherwise you can run around Mandibuzz down there. I was like, okay. So there's Metacham, there's... Pangoro, no, I, I don't need another dark type that is weak to, or another mon that's weak to fighting types. I already have Drill, Titar, and um, Stoutland, so that's out. There's Passimian, hey, it gets Defiant. You know what, if I have webs on my side, I can get the boost, or Defog to clear my webs and rocks and that, I get the boost. It's base 80 speed. No. Okay. Next fighting type. Um. Uh, there's Scrafty. Nope, that's the same thing as Pangoro. So that's a no. There's Toxicroak. Again. No, not where I need it to be in a speed spot. So it's like, okay. RNG. We land on Mega Glade, or not Mega Glade, Standard Glade. Okay, we'll take Glade, so. Um, that's why I have Glade. It does give me a boost from knockoff, uh, because of Justified ability, obviously. Yeah, base 80 speed's not great, but I could Swords Dance up a couple times and then go to town um, on things, help me break. It does everything that Mega Glade does, just slower. Um, so yeah. But yeah, there's the team. I'm really, really liking this team. It, I think this is another solid draft myself. Um, outside of a couple mons like Salazzle, I'm not too particularly thrilled about it, but I do think this is a very solid draft. And yeah, I like it. So hopefully we can take the Charizards here, make some noise, get a couple more wins than last season. I'd like to get more than two wins this season. I'd like to make playoffs and flex and show just how good sand can be so with all that being said i know i've rambled way longer than i want to on this video thank you guys for watching um please check out the links in the description down below also if you want to leave a comment tell me what your favorite mon is what you're looking forward to um with this team if you have a suggestion for what i should do about my salazzle issue um that'd be great um yeah, check out the links down below. Weather Gamer Discord's down there. 
great place to come hang out outside of these videos. It's also where WWC is now taking place. Um, Griffin Feathers, his Twitch is down, or not Griffin, yeah, Griffin Feathers slash Luca. I'll probably start calling him Luca from now on because that's his new name. Um, his Twitter is down there. You can check him out. He's the one that made the Charizards logo. Um, great dude. Go show him some love from the Little Gamer family. Um, Twitch. My Twitch will be down there. I am going to get back to Twitch streaming. Um, as I've said, I've got to figure out what I'm doing about internet for Twitch streaming. But we'll get that back and rolling. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.